Welcome to part 3 of this Warhammer Dad terrain tutorial on how to build a lava river game board. So far we have built the panels, cut the rivers out, done some texturing, uh, painted it, uh, covered it in sand, painted it uh, black as a base coat, and now we are going to move on to the next stage which is dry brushing. Alright, so here we are after the uh, first dry brush, just a medium gray, and uh, um, just for a little comparison, you don't see a ton of difference here, um, but uh, you will as you go along. Uh, the medium gray doesn't make a big difference. Uh, I'm going to finish up all these medium grays and then I'll move on to the, to the light gray. All right, this is after a medium dry brush, and just for comparison's sake, you can look at here is after just a dark, and then here's a medium. Uh, so let me get back to finishing that up so you can see the difference right there. All right, so here it is after the first two layers of dry brushing. Still have uh, another layer to go. Uh, I'm just gonna do a really light one right around uh, the edges of where the uh, the lava river flows. Uh, so that's it all laid out. One more dry brushing and then we can head off into the lava. All right, done with the highlighting now. So sitting on the floor of my garage. So now. finished up one terrain piece to go with it. So, and then just so get an idea what the lava is going to look like. Okay. All right, let me change my light. I want to check it from the other side and make sure it looks good with the light on both sides. All right, now here it is coming from the other side. Just making sure that didn't miss any huge areas. Left that area kind of dark on purpose that's you know farther away from all the lava all right well uh, next step is to put the lava in and finish up some more of the terrain pieces okay time to start doing caulk what I did is I took some scrap wood it's actually pretty nice little hunks of flame maple but uh, put them down as spacers uh, that way they're all the same height uh, the theory is if I bring the caulk to the uh, level of the spacer then they'll be even when they come across uh, that's the theory anyway all right and then the last one this one doesn't need a spacer because it's all self-contained so I'm going to work on that one next uh, I'm on the last of the caulking and uh, I gave up on the trying to do them all side by side and just decided to do them this way and I'll use those little, I use those little sticks just as a, a block to keep it flat. It's such a low uh, side that it doesn't really matter. Um, so uh, I decided to actually ended up getting just a glue brush uh, instead of a nicer brush um, and uh, it should do. It's taken almost exactly uh, a tube of caulk. Uh, I had a little bit in a prior tube, so really probably overall I'll take about a tube and a half for the whole thing, including all the little extras. Um, and then what I'm doing is I just kind of shove it into the edges, keep it kind of a random swirly pattern like lava bubbling over itself. Um, and that's about it. Uh, that's uh, let me finish this up and I'll start painting. All right, this is what I'm talking to uh, about when I say just use it um, to do the end here. So when I get to the end, I just bring it right up. Hard, I can't do this one-handed. <laughs> um, I'll just use that stick as my end piece. Our way to do this to hold it kind of still, get it up right on the stick. 
I'll touch up the lava here in a little while. Once I get the end done, I can always add more to the other spots. Okay. Then just take this and rub it back and forth a little bit. And there you go. Now you've got your flat edge. All right, that's it for now. All right, so here they are all drying. Just stacked up in the corner. All right, now here's the dry brush on the uh, the extras. Um, I really need to clean my desk. Uh, I do recommend that you actually do all of your dry brushing and painting before you put the lava on. I don't know what I was thinking. So, all right. All right, so here is the first of the uh, first layer of color for the lava fields, and I also put, uh, put it on this piece of terrain. Uh, I tried it on the volcano, it looked pretty decent, so this is what I'm going to go with. I did a lot of research online, mostly looking at how people do lava bases and the colors, and they chose yellow first, then an orange, then a red, and then a black. So that's what we're going to do. have an assortment of brushes here. Uh, those were clearly too big for this one. One thing to remember is when you get real tight, you've got to use the smaller brushes. So for the most part, I have a brush this uh, here. I think that's a... Uh, maybe a one and a half inch, half inch, one inch, two inch. Uh, and then I, I used, for this one, I actually predominantly used my uh, a glue brush because it fit into most of these tight spaces. Uh, and then I came across the corners with just, this was an old brush I was using for, uh, actually put pigments on models. Um, uh, but that worked to do in all the corners and the tight spots. Uh, one thing is uh, water down the acrylic, if you don't water it down some, it does not flow into all the little crevices and holes down as the uh, the caulk had uh, rolled up. Uh, so I think that's all the tips I got for this, uh, this batch. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do this one completely first before I do all the rest, uh, just so I can get a good feel for how it looks before I move on. All right, tip number one, when you're uh, letting things dry on the cat on the floor of the garage, be careful where you walk. I chipped off that entire edge. I glued it back on. I'm trying to glue the sand back on. We'll see how this patch works. Uh, just a couple other quick things. When you're doing the painting here, it's better to sit uh, and turn the boards while you're painting. So it saves your back a lot of trouble, and as you turn it, you'll just see all the different parts. Um, just a quick bit of advice, and then what I do is I'm running a big brush down the middle, uh, and then I'm using my glue brush to get it up right up to the edge, and then the little brush uh, just to get the little uh, bits that are too close uh, to the edge. Uh, that seems to be about the quickest way. Just a very quick shot. Uh, the orange dry brushing is uh, complete. Um, it's a little dark out here right now. I'm having to do it one a day just due to time, to time constraints. And I uh, also have done the orange dry brushing on all of the terrain pieces. And the volcano is now done. And uh, hopefully, when all is said and done, uh, all of the Lava River should look about like that. Uh, with a little more yellow since it's flowing more than this is. Uh, that's the plan anyway. All right, I'll come back after the red dry brushing is done. All right, so here's what it looks like after two br dry brushes. Sorry about the shadow here. Uh, so getting ready to start I'm sorry, after three dry brushes, that's yellow, orange, and a crimson. Just the cheapest craft paints I could find. Now I'm doing, getting ready to do a black and crimson together. Just a touch, very small touch of black in with the crimson. 
All right, and here it is after the crimson black mixture dry brush it makes a huge difference. While the others were really what I call, you know, very heavy dry brushes, uh, this one was much more of a uh, true uh, dry brush. And again, I'm sorry about the shadow. Um, uh, so anyway, as you see, uh, that takes away that cartoony look. Uh, after this, there'll be one more just really superficial, uh, some black dry brushing in a few places. All right, here's a side-by-side -side comparison of uh, after the first three dry brushes and then adding that fourth. It's a real, it's a subtle difference, um, but uh, you can tell, at least a person I haven't looked at on here, um, but that little bit of dark through there, I think, makes huge uh, difference okay moving on and finally here's a quick look at after the last dry brush with the black versus without uh, so uh, we'll uh, take it from there all right so here it is complete only thing left I'm going to put a coat of uh, flat varnish on it just uh, to protect it, but that is it. So, uh, the last step I did, let me see if I can get a good shot across the length of it. But the last bit I did was just to put, as you can see, some uh, glow after that. Uh, after the black very light dry brush went back covered in some areas um, the area that was broken I can't find so that's a good sign it was right in here somewhere uh, a couple little areas I still need to got a little bit to touch up right there um, but otherwise you can follow the flow of the river a few things uh, might want to consider putting the lava in before you paint the sides um, that way you don't get any little holes uh, anywhere um, consider carefully how wide you want some of these areas particularly this area in here they're very hard to get into. Um, so, and here it is from the other side. All right, so here it is set up in my very small game room. You can see it sits on the table okay. And there is plenty of leftovers to make more terrain. Now just some gratuitous shots because I love my dark Eldar. And they just match. Thank you for watching this Warhammer Dad tutorial on making a lava board. Hopefully this will be useful for you and you can make uh, some really cool boards of your own. And uh, thanks again and until next time this is Warhammer Dad signing out.